Welcome back, everybody. Time for some more Strategic Command World War One. It is January 1st, 1916. Basically, nothing has happened on the Western Front. We're pretty much right where we started. It's just been a, a slugfest with no advantage happening. I've slightly pushed ahead in the East, uh, but really, for a year and a half of war, very little has changed. So we're going to press on. We're going to continue to see what happens. We're going to see how long we can hang on with this terrible morale, national morale, which I think is going to be my undoing more so than anything that happens on the field. So uh, I am in the middle of this particular turn and I'm just looking for options as far as where I can attack. There continues to not be a real clear place to do that uh, on the Serbian front, unfortunately. I do have some artillery up here that I can start to move into position uh, right here we're just kind of trying to hang on against the Romanians keeping them from pressing ahead anywhere I think I'm going to go ahead and entrench these guys dang there's just nowhere I can attack I, I really just I, I've been saying this like crazy but I gotta say it again I need the Austro-Hungarian army to get better because uh, there's just all of these places that I could attack but they just don't have the skill to be able to attack with any kind of success so I moved a unit into here and now I can see that not only is this front line of the Russians heavily fortified but the two lines behind that are also fortified <laughs> so that's kind of where we are right now and why it's such a difficult push to really get anywhere beyond that man there's just really not a lot of places that I can go with anything I really in hindsight a couple of things I should have done much sooner one of which was to invest in artillery sooner and the other one is I should have gone ahead and declared war on Belgium so I could have pushed through Belgium quicker taken some of these territories and probably uh, made the situation on the western front much more successful i gotta get that artillery out of there uh, he's got artillery everywhere on the western front and you can see just what that does to me all right let's go ahead and invest we've got 278 points for the austro-hungarians let's see where we can invest some more points to desperately get some better attacking ability um, ground attack weapons. Let's go ahead and pour two points into that. Uh, we've still got 118 to go. Where else can we put something that's going to make a difference? Okay, there we go. I think that's pretty well going to do it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, it worked. We got infantry warfare level one for the Austro-Hungarians, so that was at least a little bit helpful. Um, beyond that, I don't know that we got any big boosts in research on this turn. UK introduces conscription. The second Anzac Corps set sail. I don't think there's a whole lot else that's happening right now. Ah, oh, man, he's just continually going after my subs. Thankfully, the, for the most part, they've been able to avoid the attacks. All right, he's going pretty heavily after that one particular corps in the west, and now he's just hammering me with artillery with that unit that I advanced with, and that was a mistake on my part. I, I was just trying to get around behind him, and I wanted to see what else was back there. But that artillery just slugged away at me. Looks like that's where he's trying to focus his attacks right right now. Really, the only chance I've got is not going to be to push through right here. It's going to have to be to get around behind them and push through from the top and try to do something that way. Wow, I didn't realize that he was hammering me that hard over here. All right, it looks like he's, he's kind of thin on the western front, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just a matter of they're holding him back further, but he doesn't seem to be pushing a lot of them up on the line there. All right, so very little else happened. So let's talk for a minute about what was going on in the war in 1916. Uh, because in 1916, 
Oh, first of all, we've got three new units coming. Oh, it's a rail gun. I was wondering what that was that was coming. Very cool. Uh, all right, so we, we've got some more detachments here, and obviously we're going to continue to put them on the uh, eastern front where they're going to do the most good for me. Um, I really need to get some of them down here, but I just can't really find a way to get them to the front faster. Uh, I could use that rail gun, though. We're going to throw that on the... Western Front. All right, so in 1916, Winston Churchill is appointed a lieutenant colonel, and he's put in command of the 6th Battalion of the Royal Scots Fusiliers, and he uh, he only fought for a couple of months on the Western Front up here in Belgium because, uh, you know, he was more of a politician. He was, uh, I think, part of the admiralty at that time um, in leadership in that way. Conscription was introduced in Britain at the end of January of 1917. Flamethrowers were used for the first time. Um or no, I'm sorry, not the end of uh, January 1916 conscription. Flamethrowers were used for the first time during the attack on Verdun, which was one of the bloodiest battles of the war. Uh, and you can see that right here. We haven't quite pushed that far. Um, and President Wilson in the U.S. is calling for the Germans to stop their unrestricted submarine warfare. And uh, Lord Kitchener, the British Secretary of State for War, asks uh, the U.S. to enter the war on the side of the Entente. So that's kind of what was happening at this point in the war. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at where we are on diplomacy. I don't think a lot has changed. Oh, Bulgaria is up to 87%, thankfully. Uh, Portugal is 84% the other side, but Bulgaria is going to be the big one for me. I could really use their help. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of, lot of options right here, right now, for hitting the Russians. Oh, that might work, but honestly, I'd rather reinforce them right now. Yeah, we're not going to hit them there. Uh, I didn't have any more supply than that. That kind of stinks. This is going to be a turn for doing a lot of reinforcing on the eastern front, I'm afraid. Yeah, there's still no good options over here. This guy surprisingly alive, but I'm probably going to be best to offer up some support for him here. Yeah, we're just going to basically reinforce everybody on the Eastern Front. Now here's a spot we can get an attack. Don't fall back. Don't fall back. Good. We can take out a Russian core. That leaves me a little weak right here. These guys are going to need to be reinforced. I'm hoping the Austro-Hungarians will start being able to hit a little better now that we made an improvement to their weapons. Then again, maybe not. Problem is, of course, that we're attacking in places where it's pretty much all fortified. So there's really very little where we can make significant headway at this point. All right, let's try to make something happen in the west. That helps. I think we're really just going to have to start moving forward because... The issue of morale is not going away. So we're going to have to start taking some territory from the enemy. We're going to shell these Anzacs and see if we can knock them out of there. Yeah, nothing happening there. happening there for sure either. Might be able to entrench again. All right, back to looking at research. Let's see where we can make some gains because we're desperately going to need them. Um, 
is there something I can do to improve the morale situation? I don't know that there is, but that's probably where I need to be putting my points right now. Is there anything that would help with that? All right, we wrapped up the turn. We're at the end of February. Let's see what happens here. An Irishman called Sir Roger Casement is willing to take a large consignment of arms to Ireland to equip the Nationalist and Republican groups who are planning a rise against British rule there. He asked for 25 MPPs to fund this adventure. Yeah, do it. We're desperate for anything right now. The U.S. protests the sinking of one of its merchantmen. I didn't do that. I haven't done any unrestricted submarine warfare. U.K. raises more troops through conscription. Second Anzac Corps arrives in England. Conscription leads to un industrial unrest in Sheffield. Austro-Hungarian army is weakened by desertions. Yeah, that's been happening for a while now. Brutal. You can hear all of those troops going away. Even though we don't see it happening. Philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein is posted to serve on the Eastern Front. German forces surrender in Cameroon. Uh, German Socialist Party expels 18 MPs for voting against the war. Fighting breaks out when Pancho Villa raids U.S. territory. Send Patton. Germany develops ground attack weapons level 1. Logistics development to 46%. And it's raining. Well, what... As we're watching events unfold, let's talk about some more of the things that happened in 1916. Of course, the Battle of the Somme, one of the bloodiest battles in history, uh, started in July. Also in July, there was a munitions plant in Jersey City in the United States that was destroyed by an explosion, probably by German saboteurs, uh, trying to prevent them from being able to sell arms to the Allies. Uh, there was shrapnel that flew as far away as the Statue of Liberty, it actually damaged the Statue of Liberty. Uh, Romania entered the war on the side of the Allies in August. Uh, tanks are introduced for the first time later in the war and used at the Battle of the Somme. Uh, of course, by this time, the Ottomans and the Italians are both in the war, and neither one of those things have happened so far in my version of the war. So kind of a wash, really. Uh, the main difference for me is that it protects my Austro-Hungarian flank uh, from being invaded by the Italians. But... I also lose the Ottomans from being able to enter. I really got to get Bulgaria in there, though. Hopefully, they'll be able to add a little something for me. I think I'm going to lose that core. Jeez. Pummeled. The artillery has really been a nightmare for me. You can see the Russians are doing the same thing for Memel. Man, he's just got so many shells available. I get like one attack with my artillery. That's probably a supply thing. Oh, we're going to lose that core. Darn it. He just opened up a hole on my right flank. It's been a rough turn for me here. Now we've got a unit that's separated. And there goes another core. Yeah. That core's... Oh, they fell back. I'm definitely probably going to be taking another big uh, hit to morale. Morale, in the end, is what what's going to lose this war for me. Nothing. Even when I had defensive artillery hitting him, nothing happened. I wonder if I could try to... if I. Could just have to not keep reinforcing this guy. I could start to try to maybe move this way. All right. Well, that was a rough turn for me. A lot worse than the one before it. So uh, disrupted a little bit again for the Russians. Not a lot happening there. And it looks like all we're gaining this turn is a new U-boat, which is going to do very little for me at this point. Diplomacy. Still 87% for Bulgaria. USA is starting to move off the fence now. And boy, I don't need that. I mean, I have no chance when that happens. It's going to be rough enough as it is. We'll start doing some reinforcing and I'll start looking for places that I can attack here. There we go. That helped. Man, even getting around behind him, I can't really attack him very well. I 
That's it. That's the only shell I had. I think we might be able to take this. Ah. Uh, so close. Just couldn't quite finish him off. Yeah, kind of. That's frustrating to get that close to being able to take out a core. All right, we're going to have to make this attack. We're going to have to start being a little more aggressive in our attacks. Oh, I didn't take out anybody there. I should have shelled them first before I did that. All right, we're going to try desperately to break through right here and reconnect with my forces. I just don't know if I'm going to have enough to be able to finish him off there. We got close, but not quite enough. Uh, and of course, there's the artillery threat. Always looming. A lot of my units on the front line just are in bad shape right now on the west. Let's see if we can get this railgun firing. I'm just going to get one shot. All right, we're going to reinforce this guy. We're going to move him up here. Oh, we can't. Okay, let's move them. Cavalry, probably not ideal to have on the front lines like that, but it'll have to do for now. this headquarters into there there's not a lot else I can do really all right we're into April of 1916 and I'm starting to feel like we're getting to the end of what we're gonna be able to do it just feels like I can't break through anywhere even in the east where I seem to have the numbers just because the entrenchments have just bogged things down so much We'll see if anything happens here that allows me to push forward logistics development, command and control development, infantry warfare. But I, I think I think by the end of 1916, we may be at a place where there's no no perceivable avenue to victory. But we'll see. All right, he's starting to encircle some of my troops over here and. The Eastern Front, that was kind of unexpected and probably temporary because we'll, uh, we'll we'll get reconnected with them here soon enough. But man, I can't even see the strength of a lot of these Russian units in the, in the rear now. It's April 22nd of 1916. I think we'll be into May here soon. Yeah, so he's starting to use all of his air power to start bombing that weak hold I have over on my right flank now. And maybe all that happened, I may, I may escape from this turn without losing a core. I may have spoke too soon. <laughs> oh man, that was brutal. Jeez. One hit and he takes out seven. Oh yeah, it's, the morale at this point among my troops is so low that he's just wiping the floor with me. I feel like this is unwinnable, and I feel like dragging it out any longer is probably a waste of my time. So what I think I'll probably do is just go ahead and play through to the end, and we'll see how long it takes him to actually win victory. I don't think it's going to be very long. Yeah, so I lost four corps destroyed there. My national morale for Germany has fallen below 50%. Um, yeah, we can do something to kind of stem that a little bit, but it's really just kind of prolonging the inevitable. Austria-Hungary's morale is down to 13%. This is just not winnable. I mean, you would look at the battlefield and think, okay, we're still holding. Uh, if anything, we, 
we're a little ahead of where we were at the start of the war in terms of uh, territory that has been gained. Uh, we've certain, certainly gained territory in the south. We've gained a little bit of territory in the east. We've held our own on the west. But morale is such that the war is unwinnable at this point. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this series because I feel like prolonging it. Yeah, I could probably go a couple more episodes hanging on, but I can't win. And if I can't win, there's no point in continuing to play, I don't think. So I'll wrap it up here. We are going to revisit this game at some point because I feel like I've learned a lot. And I feel like next time around it could be a different situation with what I've learned. Uh, so let me know your thoughts about all of that. But maybe in another week or two, we'll restart this series uh, with what I've learned and see if we can turn this into a victory. Uh, but for now, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, hope that you will stick around for some of the other series that we have going on. Uh, I'm going to be adding the Guild 3 to the rotation once I get caught up with a couple of other things. So thanks for watching, guys. Check us out over on Discord. We can have a, a continued conversation about World War One. There's a channel for that there. Talk about the history and anything else you want to talk about. Thanks for watching.